Hello and welcome to Bit by Bit Leadership Conversation. I am still in New York after the Amazon event this morning talking about Alexa Plus and I have the honor and pleasure to have Nadim Fresco who is VP of Alexa Technology here with me to get into a little bit more of the detail on the technology side of Alexa. So thank you for sparing some time. Of course. Uh, this morning was pretty impressive if I can say that. Um, you know, the ability to do so much live demo as it was done on stage and everything worked fine, it was pretty fantastic. But some of it looked a bit like magic. So I want to take our time to explain actually to uh, our viewers a little bit what's behind the, the scenes that make Alexa work. Um, you and I talked about this um, a, a few weeks ago, but um, also panels this morning talking about the vision of Alexa staying true to how it started, but now the technology kind of caught up with yes, Alexa absolutely. and is allowing you to do things that you weren't able to do before. Can you tell me a little bit more about that background work that is happening to really turn Alexa into a full AI-enabled agent? Yes, absolutely. So um, as Panos talked about, this vision of Alexa has been with us for a long time. Um, we wanted to build the world's best personal assistant, and that vision has really stayed constant. It hasn't changed. But sometimes these technology changes happen, and they're really um, influential. And with the advent of LLMs, we saw an opportunity to connect those new AI skills developing in the industry um, and build a product that finally allowed us to realize our vision for Alexa. And from an LLM perspective, you mentioned this morning that you supported both Nova and Anthropic, but you also said that the, you picked the best LLM for the job, so to mm -hmm. speak. How does that actually work? Yeah, uh, we use a collection of models in Alexa. Machine learning plays a big role, and we use several models of various sizes. Um, and we typically try to, um, no, no model is great for all jobs. They have specialty areas. We know we hear about yeah. this, this all the time. We try to build the, pick the best model for the job across a collection. Does that matter more to uh, Alexa because of the breadth that from a user perspective I might want to engage with? Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, as you saw this morning, there were several demos. Um, when you build the world's best personal assistant, there's really no limits to what you can ask it. And we want to be competent in several areas. So we want to be conversational and we want to be connected to the devices and services you use the most. So the goal of the architecture is to bring all of that together. I always think about the home as a very complex environment to have an agent be as thoughtful and personal when you share this space. What are some of the challenges that you were trying to solve before getting to market? Yeah, um, you mentioned devices, so that's, that's a good example. Um, our customers love to equip their devices with smart home, uh, equip their homes with smart home devices. Um, there's, um, our best customers have several devices, varying names. We place them in different rooms. They name the rooms as well. And um, so the technology challenge is, how do you reason about that setup and understand without confusion what to activate when the user wants it. And with LLM technology, we're now able to do that far, far better and far more flexibly. There was one particular demo that got everybody talking because it was so complex. And it was when uh, Daniel was talking about booking an Uber for somebody yes. else and then sending a text message to the person to alert her that yes. the Uber was coming. How do you pull all that together? Um, as Daniel explained, uh, we created uh, a notion of experts. Experts are a series of instructions and systems that come together to get a certain expertise uh, into Alexa Plus. And we have hundreds of these uh, experts. So whenever you're getting into a new domain, you create a new expert that teaches Alexa Plus about what to do in that area. So everything you saw was a collection of experts. Expert coming together. Yes. 
and Alexa is the orchestrator. In a way, Alexa is the orchestrator of all of those experts. Yeah, that's what that's I think. That's that, what the metaphor uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. and, uh, is intended to communicate. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah. definitely. Um, with more data and more interaction, there's also maybe a growing concern as far as privacy and security as well. Obviously, Panos made it very clear Alexa has been built uh, as a trusted companion, and I personally don't think that this changes anything, right? You continue yeah. to do what you've been doing? Absolutely. This does not change. Privacy has always been very important to us. We built the product from the ground up um, with privacy in mind. We built privacy features into our hardware. Um, transparency and control are also very important to us. So. There's an Alexa um, privacy dashboard where you can see everything that Alexa knows about you. You can see um, uh, what's out there. You can delete it, opt out of certain things. You have full transparency and full control. And I think I always say that transparency is the key of everything because as long as I, as a, as a user, feel in control and I'm you know, uh, aware of how the data is used, mm -hmm. but then everything also gets thrown out the window because if the value is enough for me to give out everything that, you know, that I possibly can to get that, you know, five minute saving or that friction that ordering my pizza <laughs> on yeah. Uber Eats creates, I'll be happy to do it. I th and I think transparency is the key to that. As long yeah. as users know exactly what they're getting um, and have the control, um, um, they'll be satisfied. I'm sure it's been hard um, as, as a team to kind of see everybody else getting out the gate and you were doing your work and staying focused and waiting for the right moment to um, get out the gate. What are you most excited for people to experience? I find the product's vision to be incredibly exciting. The world's best personal assistant, it's just a few words, but it's a very ambitious vision. And with the technology advances out there, we finally have a chance to realize that vision. So it's the breadth and depth of the capabilities implied by that vision that gets me super excited. Um, what you saw is a beginning, and it has a chance to expand to new areas of competency so so I can see a bright future for Alexa. Do you see also the opportunity, and by the way, I think on the personal side is where the stakes are really high, right? So as soon as something is that personal and coming to mm -hmm. my home, my level of um, patience with error or, you know, failure is, is minimal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but if you're thinking about Alexa as an orchestrator, do you think there's also an opportunity to help consumers bring together Amazon services and offering in a more cohesive way, so to speak? Yeah, I, I think there's definitely a promise of that in the product. We talked about it at length. We want AI that can take action. And we want AI that can connect to the services that you love and use every day. I think it's most powerful if it all comes together like that. Um, and I think with this product, we are achieving that, and we showed several ways we are achieving that. I think that's very exciting. Aside from um, Panos' dog getting into the, <laughs> <laughs> the van yes. this morning, was there anything that surprised you looking and, and hearing the crowd reaction mm -hmm. to the demos? Yeah, um, when you're in the act of building it, it's hard to gauge yeah. everybody's reaction. But I did really appreciate that reaction in the crowd. Every one of these features, we had a strong product point of view that it was a useful thing to do for customers, that customers would appreciate it. So when you hear that appreciation, it's a confirmation of that, of that belief. Yeah, and I feel that, I mean, Panos has been like this his whole career and, you know, is, I think is a great match with Amazon and the focus that you have yeah. on customers and starting with the customer and pain point and then kind of work the technology, if you like, to that stand, yes. extent versus the other way around. Of yes, absolutely. This is not technology first. This is the customer first. We try to imagine what can be most useful and use the best technology for the job. 
But you said this is just the beginning mm -hmm. without asking you to tell me things that I should not know. Yeah, I, I couldn't <laughs> tell you, but I can hint. <laughs> so hint at where you see this road ahead. And, and obviously we know this is rolling out in waves and it's going to start with US English uh, first. Yes. Yeah. Um, we definitely intend to roll out in other countries as well. This is definitely the beginning. So later in the year, we'll be rolling out. So we'll be announcing uh, where we roll out. Um, I did say this is the beginning because the uh, user experience of natural conversations, I believe, is a durable thing. Yes. People do want to interact with what they find useful that way. And once they get to experience this, this power, I, I, I think they will really appreciate the useful features uh, more. So, in a way, it seems like the beginning of a journey. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with you, and I and I think that maybe discovery is the part that is absolutely critical here, right? Yes. Uh, getting users who I always talk about behavioral debt, and I was joking the other day that there's nothing that shows behavioral debt more than somebody that is using a four-wheeled suitcase and still using two wheels, right? <laughs> and so if you're thinking about it from an Alexa point of view, it, how are we going to get people to stop just asking about timers and yeah. actually grow to the full potential that Alexa now yeah. has? Um, it, it's, what I found in using the product is it's entirely limited by your imagination in yeah. a way. We're unconstraining. Um, the constraints we had previously. Previously, as Panos mentioned, there was this Alexa speak, a command language, and people constrained themselves to speak that way because that's all Alexa would understand. But with the natural language abilities, we're unconstraining the user. And we believe that slowly they will um, speak naturally as they speak to a human and get human-like responses. So um, I believe that that's going to really help the discovery problem as well. That's perfect. Um, one last thing, as more personal perspective, mm -hmm. what are you looking to use more? Ah, uh, yes. Um, I take so much delight in all of these features. Okay. And it depends on what you're in the mood for. Yeah. Sometimes you just want to fulfill a task. And I really appreciate that book it moment. <laughs> really, it's one word away. I love it. Um, and then sometimes you want, you like the conversation. So I love engaging Alexa in a journey of discovery in a way, ask questions, and I learn something new every time. Um, so I like, I like all of that. All of it, but yes. I mean, being so close to Alexa, <laughs> yes. we don't expect anything else. It's hard else. to choose. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much oh, for your pleasure. time today. Thanks for speaking Lovely to me. Lovely to see you.